Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe is on his first trip to Washington, and it doesn't look like he'll ha have a lot of time for sightseeing. Over the next two days, the Premier is scheduled to meet with U.S. lawmakers and three senior members of President Trump's administration, including Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross. He plans to impress upon them how harmful U.S. tariffs are for both countries. Premier, Premier Moe is concerned about the Evraz steel plant in Regina. It employs about 1,000 people. $250 million in steel exports were shipped from Saskatchewan to the U.S. last year. So what has the Premier's message been and what has the response been to that message so far? The Premier, Mr. Mo, joins us now from Washington. Hi, Premier Mo. Thanks for being with us. Oh, thanks so much, Bessie. So you met today with uh, Mick Mulvaney, the Director of Office of Management and Budget, and of course the EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. What did you tell them? Oh, we talked about NAFTA in general and the positive trade relationship that we've had for uh, through that agreement for the last two and a half decades and the relationship we've had extending previous to that and also talked about the uh, challenging discussions we're having at the moment and I think it's important in the broader context that uh, we all remember that 25 years ago at the inception of this agreement we also had challenging uh, discussions uh, at that point in time. So these, uh, these discussions have extended now to a tariff and a counter tariff uh, along our border. And so we, we discussed also what the impacts of, of that may be and also you know, what some potential short term and, and longer term opportunities may be as well. So what was their response like? How would you describe the tone of the meeting? Because I'll, I'll ask because it's all happening against the backdrop of this reports of this call between the president and the prime minister that was very testy. Uh, so so what is the tone like in your conversations? Well, I think uh, the tone of our conversations have been quite receptive on both sides as there is an understanding that the last two and a half decades of of, uh, of our North American free trade agreement being in, a, in, a, in effect has been beneficial uh, for the most part. It is time to, uh, to modernize that agreement um, but it, it, there is a, a, a mutual respect that it has been beneficial for our industries in North America and has really uh, provided us with that continental uh, um, uh, value or wealth um, that we you know maybe wouldn't have had otherwise so um, th but that doesn't discount you know the, the challenging discussions that we're having uh, what's hopefully in the in the last days and what's hopefully uh, will result in a, in a renewed uh, NAFTA for for all of us. How are they explaining uh, Mr. Trump's position on this? Um, with respect to the, the free trade agreement itself? Or, or the, the tariffs. Specific? How are they explaining why these tariffs have been levied against Canada and why, we, why we're kind of being called the national security threat? Yeah, no, that's right. And I, I had mentioned that, you know, we, we export, uh, you know, a, a number of products to to uh, to the United States of America, just 55 percent of our exports out of Saskatchewan had there uh, on its own. So we most certainly, in our opinion, are not a national security threat. And I think from the Canadian perspective, we feel that we may be getting uh, caught up in some of the uh, some of the other targets that the, that the U.S. may have uh, around the world. But do um, they try and justify that that label that that we could be a national security threat or do they understand your concern with it? Well, no, they understand our concern with it. And I, I also believe there's a feeling that tariffs are, are uh, you know, part of a tool that can be used uh, from time to time. What was my uh, my job is to impress on them the, the results that this has uh, for industries on both sides of the border. And I can share a quick result with respect to steel. Uh, we have a plant in Regina, Saskatchewan, that recycles most of the automobiles, end-of-life automobiles in Western Canada, a great service. We then take that product and we send that steel down to Portland, Oregon, where they make a plate steel, uh, send that plate steel back to Camrose, Alberta, where they make pipe. That pipe then is sent south again to Oklahoma and Texas uh, into the oil field uh, in those areas. And that pipe simply right now isn't moving. It's sitting on the loading dock in, in Canada, in Western Canada. And it's, the result is we have energy, tra energy transportation projects uh, in the U.S. that aren't being built. They're being stalled uh, because we're deciding who's going to pay this tariff and ultimately no one is going to pay it. Did they realize that? Do you think that that is something that they are aware of? Well, they are now because we've met with them and we've explained uh, the situation here is that we have energy, U.S. energy companies in Texas and Oklahoma that aren't moving forward with their projects. We have a U.S. based uh, company in Everest Steel out of uh, Chicago, Illinois that, uh, you know, is deciding who can pay these tariffs. They have loading docks full of, of product and there's, there, there are opportunities, you know, for us to move past this tariff based discussion and, and, uh, and really move into a renewed NAFTA discussion as we move forward. So we, we've had a recep uh, receptive reception here today and we look forward to more meetings tomorrow. Some officials have floated the idea that again tying it to NAFTA but floated the idea of proceeding instead with bilateral talks. Would you be in favor of that? 
Well, I, I think at this point in time, we have a North American free trade agreement that has been beneficial for, for our continental uh, um, economic well-being, if you will. And we should make every effort to ensure that we can renew and update and modernize that agreement that we have because of the successes that it has provided all of the partners. So I, I, our focus should be on a renewed, modernized NAFTA that will move us into the, into the next number of decades, uh, one that I, I identifies how financial services have, have changed, one that identifies, you know, all of the services uh, really that have changed over the last two and a half decades. 25 years ago cell phones were just coming into existence. Today uh, they are an integral part of everyday life. So, but if, the only, but if the only way forward is a bilateral discussion, are you against that? Um, I, I think at this point in time the way that we should be looking forward is for the North American Free Trade Agreement modernization. Based on your conversations, what do you think, how realistic do you think it is that I, there can be any kind of deal? I'm hopeful there is an opportunity uh, not only for a deal but a deal in the very near future and that's when it'll become uh, you know quite evident the responsibility that I have and, and my counterparts across the U.S. and premiers and governors across the U.S. at the subnational level have in ensuring that as an agreement in principle is, is hopefully reached um, that we ensure that that agreement in principle uh, comes into effect in the industries that affect our regions um, to the benefit of all on both si on all sides of the border as uh, as we've had that benefit benefit over the last 25 years and we've created a uh, essentially in 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 uh, the continent of North America this continental economic superpower that is uh, is admired uh, from around the world and that should be our goal is to continue with that effort before i let you go based on your conversations are the is the threat of the retaliation the retaliatory tariffs from Canada having any effect on us officials right now uh, there, there is an awareness uh, how this will uh, affect their industries, and there's some questions being asked on how this will affect their industries. And are they worried? We well, well, what I've tried to do in my meetings today and yesterday is to display exactly what that effect looks like. And, and the, the, the example that I'd given you is there's a number of, of U.S. companies that are going to feel the, the brunt of those tariffs. And uh, so I think, I think there is concern uh, on both sides of the border with respect to tariffs of any kind as they don't help industries, they don't help jobs, and they don't help uh, the wealth of our economy. Are, do you think that the that that they the people you spoke with and others will take advantage of the time before our counter tariffs kick in and lobby the lobby the president or do you think those tariffs should kick in right away? Um, I, I think the uh, the time is is uh, is well placed actually. So it allows me to be here. Um, um, I didn't realize these tariffs were going to be on when I planned this trip, um, but it is very timely for me to be here advocating on behalf of Canada and Saskatchewan's interests, and and most notably uh, having the communication with uh, a number of different individuals in in President Trump's cabinet, the Senate, as well as the House of Representatives on what the actual impacts are and how they impact. Those impacts are felt on both sides of the border. Uh, so we need to continue to communicate in order to continue to have uh, the, the, the positive trading relationship that we've had the last two and a half decades and I, I look forward to that tomorrow and into the weeks and months ahead. Thanks Premier Mo, appreciate your time. Appreciate it so much Vassie. Two of the biggest concerns